Google Ads audiences are a specific type of audience where you can use multiple different targeting options to create a really specified group of users. Now, the naming convention isn't quite what I would like it to be. They can only be used in a few places. But in this video, I want to clarify what Google Ads audiences are and what the name should be. Then we'll go through how you can build the different audiences in the account. And then we'll talk about which types of campaigns you can use them in. To start building an audience in Google Ads, the first thing we need to do is navigate to the Audience Manager. So in the new interface, that's going to be in the left-hand navigation. We're going to go to Tools. And then under Shared Library, your view might have it closed down. You just need to open that up. And Audience Manager is the one at the top. At this point, I want to start to demystify the naming convention a little bit of this video. As I mentioned, we're going to talk about Google Ads audiences. And technically, everything in this audience manager is an audience. But we're going to focus on this second tab here. We already have a video that covers the Your Data segments, which is going to be all of the remarketing audience targets that you can have in Google Ads. If you're interested in that, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. But continuing down the right-hand line, as I said, we're going to focus on audiences. As you can see, there's already one in this account because this is an actual client account. And just reiterating the point one more time, audiences is a terrible name for what this portion of the interface is. Google's naming convention for things has gotten very interesting over the past few years, should say. And the best way for me to tell you exactly what Google Ads audiences are and how to differentiate them is actually just to build one. So let's just go up here to the blue plus button and start making a new audience. Now we've got a little bit more insight. This isn't the audience in the way you might think, which was probably more of the retargeting audience. This is actually a very specific type. And rather than calling it an audience, what they should call it is an audience signal, because this is the exact same builder as you will find in Performance Max and demand generation campaigns in the Google Ads interface. And that's exactly where you can use any of these audiences. You can build them in the campaign builder itself, It'll show you exactly the same interface. You can save it to your campaign, or you can build them in this shared library of an audience manager and then apply them to your campaigns as you see fit. So the first thing we want to do is give it a name. Since I'm not going to save this in this account, this is going to be the easiest thing for me to do. And now let's start to talk about how we can build an actual audience segment in this builder. The first thing you'll notice is that below the name, this builder is broken up into three sections. We have three different headers. The first is going to be include people who match any of the following, and that's going to include custom segments, your data, and interests and detailed demographics. And because they have the bolded language of match any, that means that this entire section between all three of these options is going to be an or statement. Somebody can be in one of your custom segments or your remarketing list or the interest and detailed demographics. The next section is going to be exclude people who match any of the following. So again, this will be an or statement within this exclusion. And then down at the bottom, we have narrow audience of people who only match the following. So this is going to be an augmentation of this or statement up here. Let's start to go through each of these and just give a little bit more detail about how you can start to combine these. So first is a custom segment. These are based on people's search activity, downloaded apps, or visited websites. If we click in here, you can see that there are already two that have been used in this account. But if we wanted to go to browse, there are a number of them that are eligible for this account. That's simply because the ones that showed up at the beginning were ones that have recently been used. And if you have a custom segment you know you want to use, all you have to do is check the box, and then it's added to this audience signal. But from here, you can create a new segment just by clicking this link over here. And now we have an entire new builder where we can give our segment a name. We can include people based on their interests and behaviors, whether they simply have these interests or purchase intentions, or we can do it based on any of the search terms that they've used on Google. You can also expand the list by targeting people who browse certain types of websites. You get to add in the specific URL or people who used certain types of apps where you can actually search all of the apps that are available on the Google Ads platform. Now that's the extent to which I'm going to cover custom segments because Joe's already put together a video that'll walk you through all of the rest of the details much better than I have already. And you can check out that video at the top of the screen right now. For now, I'm just going to X out of this and go back to the normal builder. So we already have one custom segment in place. Next, let's say we want to add in some remarketing lists, people who've already interacted with your business. We can simply check into this box. You can use the search function that's here or you can browse and come up with any of the different remarketing audiences based on the custom combinations that you've built, whether they were the website visitor, a YouTube user, 
or a customer list. I already referred to the other video that we recently released around the Your Data segments earlier. Refer back to that if you want a little bit more detail of the types of audiences you can put here. For now, I'll go ahead and add in just one or two, just because. Now that we've added in that audience, we're telling Google in this audience signal, we want anybody who has been a part of that custom segment or anybody in that all visitors list from Google Ads. The next section is gonna be the interests and detailed demographics. So again, if we open this up, you can see in market segments, life events, and more. So by checking in here, this should look pretty familiar. We've used one recently. Let's go ahead and go to browse. We can see the in market audiences. So this is gonna be the same list that you get to see everywhere else in the Google Ads interface. Life events, which include business creation, college graduation, job change, purchase a home, all that type of stuff. Detailed demographics, which is gonna be your parental status, marital status, education, homeowner status, or employment. So lots of different detailed demographics there. And I believe many of these are limited only to the United States. Apologies to anybody abroad that wants to use these that can't, but I do think some of them are gonna be limited to the US. And the last is going to be the affinity audiences. And just like the in-market audiences, these are going to be the same that you would see in any of the other campaign builders throughout the Google Ads interface. So let's go ahead and just add technology just because. And you'll notice there that the number on the side over here changed to be over 10 billion weekly impressions because I added in a new segment. If I were to remove it and go back to where we were, that brings the number of available weekly impressions down to only one to five billion, poor us. But that just illustrates how the relationship between these top three boxes is an or statement because each time I add something to this group, it's going to extend the reach that I have amongst the users on the Google network. But the box below is gonna have the opposite effect. It's gonna narrow things down a little bit. So if I come down to exclusions, open this up, you can see here we can exclude remarketing lists. So this will be things from the Your Data segment in the Audience Manager. And I'm not gonna open this up just because it's gonna cause us to have to blur a bunch of things out. But just like this option up here, we're gonna be able to use the custom combination, website visitors, YouTube users, and customer lists to narrow down some of the users from that top section. Maybe we wanna target everybody in those lists, but we also wanna exclude anybody who is already a customer, They've already requested a demo. Maybe the campaign we're gonna use this audience signal for is going to promote an ebook. So we'd wanna exclude anybody who has already engaged with that ebook. Any of those types of audiences could make sense here. But the biggest thing to know about this audience signal that you're building is where it's gonna end up. It's gonna end up in demand generation and performance max. And depending on what your settings are, you may not be able to target exactly this audience signal. You might be basically using it as a nice suggestion for who Google should target. I'm looking at you, Performance Max. So just keep that in mind that even though you exclude certain people, doesn't mean they're going to for sure not see your ad. Lastly, we can narrow our audience based on demographic information. These are going to be different than the detailed demographics for the most part. We have gender, age, and if we come down to additional, we have parental status and household income. Pretty sure household income is only in the United States. But if you wanna make sure you're targeting only a certain subset of people in your campaigns, you can definitely use these demographics to narrow down. Just be sure that you're doing this correctly. If you wanna target only men of the age of 50 and over, you would uncheck female. Your age would be, I guess, 55 and over is all you can do. And that would mean you're only including these users in the targeting. This demographics box down below, even though it's below the exclusion section, still operates as a target builder, not users to exclude. Once you're finished building your audience signal, you can just click save and it'll show up in the manager like we saw earlier. But as I said, I'm not gonna save this. Go ahead and click cancel. Yes, I'd like to discard. One thing I do wanna show you that I think is important is that you'll remember I said that audience signals can be used for demand gen and performance max campaigns. And in the audience manager, you can see where these are added to. Here, this one is added to one ad group and one asset group. So let's say I decided that I wanted to change this audience signal because I wasn't seeing good performance or we had a new remarketing list I wanted to add. Whatever the reason be, all you have to do is hover over the audience name. It'll bring up a little preview. You can click edit down here. Now let's make a change. Let's say that I take out signal in the audience name just because we can. Now that a change has been made, I'm gonna click save. When I do that, it gives you an option of how you want to save your audience. I think this is very handy. As you can see here, this signal is in two campaigns, one performance max, one demand gen. 
So I have the option of saving this audience as it is, and the changes will be applied to the listed ad and asset groups. Or I could save this audience as a copy if I wanted to. And that would mean that any of the changes I made here would not have an impact on the existing audience signal in the campaigns as they stand currently, but I could effectively just give this audience a slightly different name. We'll just put example in here just because, and then I click save. And now I have two versions of this same one, but you can see this one here is in use. That's the existing one. Nothing has changed. And now my not in use is the new one with example in the name and it's not applied anywhere. Super simple, a very clean way to make changes in the account. Now, if you wanted to apply this to a campaign, it's very simple. Let's just go ahead and use the Performance Max campaign in this account. We'll go to Campaigns, Campaigns. I narrowed down to just the Performance Max view because the name is very easy. We don't have to blur that out. I could then just click into the campaign. It's not currently active, so it doesn't really matter. I'll go to the Asset Group, and then I can come over to Signals over here, click this pencil, and you'll see down here at the bottom, the audience signal being used is the same one we saw in Audience Manager that I duplicated just a little bit ago. From here, I have a lot of the same options that I have in the Audience Manager, but it would only apply to this campaign. So first, I could edit the audience if I want to. I can edit a copy of this audience, or I could remove this audience signal from this campaign. But you'll notice here it just says deselect this audience. Doesn't mean delete it doesn't mean delete it from the account, just not use it for the audience signal here. And let's say in theory, we wanted to switch from the current audience signal to the example I just made. All you would need to do is come to add saved audience signal. You can see we're selected on the top. I would just check the one down at the bottom and then it has switched over. For now, I'm gonna switch it back because like I said, this is a live client account and I don't actually want it to be on the example. From there, you just click save and your new audience signal will be applied. Overall, even though audiences or audience signals might not have as clear of a name as we might like them to, they're pretty easy to set up and they have a very clear use case being applied to just the Performance Max campaigns and demand gen campaigns in the Google Ads accounts. Hopefully you now have a little better understanding of why there's a tab called audiences in the audience manager, even though there are lots of other tabs that have other audiences. But if you have any questions about audiences audience signals as they should be named or anything else in the Google ads interface, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the paid media pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.